Okay, we're working on a uh, Toyota 7FDR, Toyota Restruct. So, we already have it on blocks. The uh, customer complaint on this was that uh, it wasn't driving. We're getting a code out of it, but it doesn't concern the drive. So, a bit of a history. Somebody replaced the motor already. I know it's not a brand new motor, but they replaced it thinking that the problem was in the motor. But after replacing the motor, still a no drive. Let me key it on, show you what's happening here. All right. You hear the motor running. That's the pump motor. It stops and it goes out G3, right? But even with that, you try to step on the dead man or no drive. No reaction from the drive car. Okay, so what we're gonna try to do is eliminate the G3 first and then go from there. Okay, so I printed out the uh, manual. So code G3 is saying that it's an accumulator pressure switch open. So basically it's the computer, the CPU, is not detecting the pressure switch. All right, so we're gonna look at that next. So hop on over to the truck. This is the accumulator and this is the line for the switch as you can see somebody was trying to work on this and trying to fix the wiring okay, so looking at the schematic again so on here you see that there is connector cn87 we're not going to check that yet so lspa and ls negative so lspa would be your signal wire and this is reference to the uh, negative so as you can see on the schematic, that's my LSPA connected to my CPU. That's the representation for my switch. And then you have, goes back to the computer, LS negative is basically my negative supply connected all the way down to N2, which is connected to my battery negative. Here, N2, right, goes up, supply. So the way that Toyota uses this, and this is gonna be common for even the five series, three wheelers, seven series, three wheelers, is that all their switching is referenced to five volts. So basically inside the computer you have a resistor, and that is gonna be five volts, pulled up. So the signal wire is always gonna be pulled up to five volts. The switch now would have a line to the negative. So if this is the signal wire, when the switch is pressed, what you should see, what you should see on this line or this pin is five volts. And then when the switch is activated, it should drop down to zero. All right, so five volts and then zero when the switch is activated. All right, so right now we're back probing into that connector for the uh, pressure switch for the uh, accumulator. Black lead is connected to my negative, negative on the battery. So as you can see right now, I already see the five volts on my uh, signal wire, all right? Now let me turn on the truck. So pump is going or the motor is going. Why both didn't change, All right? So what should have happened is the pump should have created the pressure inside the accumulator and then the switch would close and that five volt should turn to zero because it's gonna be connected to the negative. So right now I'm having a code G3, right? So what we're gonna try to do is simulate the switch uh, making contact all right so what I'm gonna do is I know my black lead is connected to my negative so I'm gonna take that out I'm gonna take this and I don't know if you can hear the sound what I'm gonna try to do is bypass I know if you hear the sound it stopped G3 code is gone, all right? 
So what I just did back there right now is do a bypass test. So my signal wire from the computer with a 5 volt reference, when the switch is activated, it should drop down to zero or be connected to the negative. And that's what I did, bypass it. So, I'm gonna tell right now, there's nothing wrong with the switch, right? There's nothing wrong with the switch. There's nothing wrong with the pressure switch. And there's nothing wrong with the negative wire. So the problem with this is that accumulator was leaking. You can see from the bottom. So what they did was to hop on over to the front of the truck. This is the connection for that accumulator. And somebody plugged it there. So of course there's no pressure going, there's no hydraulic oil going into the accumulator. So the pressure switch would never be activated. And that's why we're having a code G3. But even with a code G3, now it's out. Remember, the problem with this was, the complaint was a no drive. So now that I don't have the code, let's step on it again. All right, and try to drive. No reaction. Still a no drive. Okay, so now we don't have a code G3, we don't have any other codes, but the truck is still not driving. Remember, the motor on this truck was already replaced before, before it even got here. Whenever a truck that's being driven by a computer, I don't care what it is, when you key on, it would always do a self-test. If there was a short in the motor, a short in the board, a short in the transistors, it would more likely throw out a code. But in this case, the computer, once it did the startup test, everything was good. At least it deemed it to be good, right? It didn't see anything wrong. So where am I gonna go next? I'm gonna be looking for an input. The computer is a logical device. So in order to get an output out of the computer, it needs an input. So before we replace anything else on this truck, we have to verify that all the inputs for it to drive are present, right? And the first thing I'm gonna try out or test out is the dead man switch, which is this guy right here. It's called a brake switch. It's being activated when you step on the pedal. I don't know if you can see that. When you step on the pedal, activates that switch and releases the mechanical brake so without that signal it could possibly not drive but we're gonna test out next try to see what we get out of this and it's gonna be the same design the switch in itself the signal wire is gonna be a positive there will be a positive 5 volts and then the other wire the other wire would be a negative should be a negative so we're gonna test out which wire is which. If I see the five volts, that would be considered my signal wire. Okay, now we see the same test on the wire leading to my uh, brake switch. You can see the five volts, all right? So that means to say, that's my signal wire, all right? My signal wire right now leading up to my computer. I okay, know. signal wire, I'm just using my lead. I connected all the way to the negative, the battery. Right, that's all I need. I did. Also, my uh, accumulator switch is jumped. Also connected to the negative of the battery. Step on this to release the brakes. All right, and drive. As you can see, it's driving now. Forward, reverse. No code. Okay, so I got my positive lead and my negative lead for my meter hooked up to the same terminal, All right? You can see I got my five volts. So that tells me that I got a good negative on that wire. So here's the thing. That's the connection for that switch. Let's try to jump it. Jump it. 
no change. That's where they jump. But if I jump it here, see the voltage changing. Okay, so there's a problem with the wiring. From here up to here. Maybe in the connector itself. Can I try to fix that? And this should be all so good. I figured out the problem. It's not in here. It's not in the switch. It's actually this terminal right here. It's broken right at the end. Alright, so right now we fixed it. Heat on. Alright, step on the dead man. Try to drive. Good. Yep, everything good. We can call this a fix now.